Let's see how to create relationship names in Oracle Data Modeler. So I've got my Data Modeler open. Let's create an entity relationship diagram. I'm not going to worry about attributes, so I'm just creating two entity types, car and person. And let's say there's a one-to-many relationship between these two, that one car can belong to only one person, but one person can own many cars. Uh, I actually want to change the source and destination. In fact, I want to put person here and car here. And source to target. One person can own many cars. One car can be owned by one person. That's the cardinality here. And then uh, I want to say person may not own a car, but a car must be owned by a person. And that's the relationship we have. Okay, so now let's create relationship names here. So we want to say every person might be the owner of one or many cars and each car must be the property of one person, right? So we want to say owner of, property of. So to do that, I just want to edit the relationship, double click on the line and then here we say, so on person, the relationship name we want to put is owner of and on car we want to put the relation property property of okay so notice what I did on person near person we want owner of near car we want property of so I put it in the name section so now when I see okay of course you don't see anything coming up in order to make the relationship names show up, you have to right click anywhere on the canvas and see show and say labels. Once you do that, you find that the names that you gave on the relationship, the names show up. Otherwise, the names don't show up. That's a more off. So creating relationship names is really easy. Now that we've seen how to name relationships in the Oracle Data Manager or Data Modeler, Let's move on to a different topic and perhaps the most important topic in entity relationship diagramming and that is in order to obtain ninja hood in entity relationship diagram to be really an expert in entity relationship diagrams you have to master many to many relationships. One to one and one to many relationships are fairly straightforward it is in many to many relationship that all the intricacies of entity relationship diagramming and database design lie. So that's the topic we turn to now. Let's take a look at this inventory management scenario in which you've got a company that keeps many products in stock. The company has many warehouses and stores many products in each warehouse. Each product could also be in several warehouses. And at various points in time, you could have no stock of a particular product and you could have an empty warehouse. Okay, so that's the classic many-to-many -many relationship that you see here. One product in many warehouses, one warehouse contains many products. That's the typical many-to-many -many relationship. Okay, so let's see. We've got all these products, keyboards, disk drives, monitors, memory, webcam. The company sells five products and it's got three warehouses. And what we said is that there's a many-to-many -many relationship between products and warehouses. And therefore, you can see here that, for example, I've got 200 disk drives stored in warehouse 1. I've got 100 disk drives also stored in warehouse 2. One product can be in many warehouses, so that's possible. Then I've got 150 monitors in warehouse 1 as well. And I've got 250 webcams in Warehouse 2. Okay, so now you see, and of course the numbers in the boxes are quantities of each of the products in each of those warehouses. So you can see that a product 
can be in many warehouses as disk drive is. It's in two warehouses, warehouse one and two. And a warehouse can contain many products as W2 does. It's got disk drives and webcams. And of course, the description allows some products to be out of stock. So we have no stock of keyboards and memory. And it also allows some warehouses to be empty. Warehouse W3 is empty. It has no products. Okay, so this is the scenario. It's a classic many-to-many -many scenario. Now, the initial entity relationship diagram could look like this. You've got product, which has got a product ID as its key. It's got a product name. And I've just shown an optional attribute called unit value of the product. And for a warehouse, we've got the warehouse ID, which is the primary key the warehouse address, which is a required attribute, and the floor area of the warehouse. Because of the fact that it's a many-to-many -many relationship, we see crow feet on both sides. And it's a completely dashed line because a product can be out of stock and a warehouse could be empty. So neither of these needs to actually participate in the relationship. That's a classical many-to-many -many relationship. Okay. So now we have a typical question. What do you do with this attribute quantity? After all, from the previous slide, we saw that for every product warehouse combination, you've got the quantities, right? But the quantity doesn't seem to figure in either of these entity types. So what do we do with this attribute quantity? Now, before we jump on and consider that point, let's understand one very important aspect, which is, all attribute values in a relational model have to be atomic. Okay, what we mean by that is that entity instances must have indivisible values for each attribute. That is, you can't take the attribute value and then divide it up into further meaningful pieces for the application. Okay, it can't have multiple values. It has to have just one value for every attribute. An instance must have one value for every attribute. Of course, every instance has its own value for an attribute. So to take a specific example of a situation that violates the requirement, let's say we've got a team table here. It's got team ID 10, team name is Bulls, and you've got four different player IDs here, 10, 20, 40, 70. Okay, that's not atomic because the values it's not one value, it's four different values. You can't put four different values into one attribute value. That's what we mean by saying it's non-atomic. It can be divided into further components. And that's not acceptable. Okay, so non-atomic values are not acceptable. So given that that is the case, what do we do with quantities? Now, one option is for us to say, I'm going to put the quantity attribute in product. You can do that, except that if you put the quantity attribute in product, consider the instance disk drive. It has two quantities, 200, 100, in warehouse one and warehouse two respectively. You can't put both of those values. You're allowed to put only one value for disk drive for quantity. Okay, but you need to put two values. You cannot put 200 comma 100 because that would not be an atomic value. It would be divisible. And you cannot put the total 300 because then you lose the fact of how much is in warehouse one, how much is in warehouse two. Okay, so that's a big problem. Now let's see, what if I put the quantity in warehouse, right? Once again, there's a problem because consider warehouse two. It has disk drives and webcams, 100 of disk drives and 250 of webcams, but you can't put both those values. You'll be allowed to put only one value. And of course, totaling up and putting 350 makes no sense whatsoever. Right? So therefore, the attribute quantity doesn't seem to fit into product or into warehouse while obeying the, multi, uh, the atomic requirement. So what do we do? Where do you put it? You can't put it in product or warehouse. Now it turns out that, as we've already discussed, you can't put it in product because placing quantity in product would make it non-atomic. You cannot put it in warehouse because placing it in warehouse would also make it non-atomic okay and so either of these approaches doesn't work for us 
right here the quantity is indicated as warehouse 1 has 200 warehouse 2 has 100 that's not atomic at all and here it says uh, product 10 we've got 100 product 30 we've got 400 not atomic so neither of these approaches actually works so what do we do now if you think about it really carefully you understand that quantity is really an attribute of the relationship not of either entity type because you're saying I've got 100 disk drives in warehouse 2 or something like that right so whenever you mention the quantity you can't just mention the quantity alone or with just one of the entity types you have to mention both the entity types because what we're talking about is I've got so many units of the product in this warehouse so quantity really refers to both of those entity types which is why if you go back and look at the original diagram here notice that the quantity is on the line it's not on this side or this side it's on the line and that indicates to us that quantity is really an attribute of the relationship okay so it is really an attribute of the relationship between product and warehouse now till now we have not spoken about relationships having attributes we only talked about entity types having attributes relationship just connects two of them two entity types okay so here we can apply the duck test which is commonly used in logical reasoning in formal reasoning if it swims like a duck and quacks like a duck it must be a duck so here we apply that to our present situation and say if a relationship has its own attribute then it's really not a relationship it's an entity type because it has an attribute it's quacking like a duck so it must have an entity uh, must be an entity type okay so now that uh, quantity has an attribute we call it really we say that there is some entity type which the relationship is really an entity type with an attribute quantity and therefore it's not just a relationship but it's really an entity type now you'll see that this always happens when you have many to many relationships whenever you have many to many relationship you'll see that you need to create a new entity type because a many to many relationship really represents an entity type okay so we always create a new entity type for many to many relationships okay that's important so I'm stressing it again